Hello everyone, welcome to this new video. We have today Vin Ho. Vin has been on my channel a couple of times, so you may have seen him before. And today's video, we're gonna discuss about how does it work if you wanna import goods to the US market. So Vin, maybe let's start by your background because you've been running Amazon FBA businesses as well as dropshipping businesses. And you actually exit a business, meaning that you sold a business a couple of years ago. So you have a strong experience about doing e-commerce in the US market. So I'm very keen to learn about your journey, the challenges, as well as the key takeaway that you get through. Sure. So I started about 10 or 15 years ago with manufacturing uh, in China. And so I had a couple of products that were made there and then I was able to import them and then sell them on Amazon. FBA, as well as my uh, other websites. And then I moved on to Vietnam a few years ago. So I've been working and importing products through some suppliers that I have contacts with there. So I moved from China to uh, Vietnam with manufacturing and importing. Okay, great. So you have an experience from sourcing as well in Vietnam. Uh, would you mind sharing with us some of the key challenges small business owner may encounter when they want to source and then import products to the U.S. market? Sure. There are a lot of challenges. If you can imagine working with anyone overseas, you know, you got time zone difference, and then you got the language barrier, and then you have to find the right product. You know, in your mind, you have something that you know what you want, but you have to communicate that with the other side. So that can be sometimes difficult. And the other issue is finding a reputable or someone you can rely on, a company or even a person that you can do business with. So that's always an issue. So those are the challenges. But I think the most important thing is, is finding um, a good person that you trust and someone uh, that has the right product for you and that will deliver on your expectations. Okay, so from your thoughts, actually finding the key factory or the key supplier is one of the main uh, challenges that we can encounter while sourcing in Asia and then importing in the US. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest issue is building that relationship. Okay, great, Vin. So now I would like to go a, a bit further and let's say you find and then you identify a reliable supplier that you can do business with. Let's say you do a test order and you want to now import products to the US. How does it work in terms of the regulation and then the compliance that you have to follow uh, to be able to import legally? Generally speaking, most products that you want to resell, you can do that in the United States. So you don't need a special permit. Uh, you only need a permit or a special authorization if you uh, have something to do with health, agriculture, or chemicals that might be sensitive to import into the United States. But generally speaking, electronic products or other manufacturing products, maybe textiles or clothing or furniture, you really don't need a permit for anything like that. So basically you would work with your supplier to get samples. So maybe uh, five, 10 or 100 samples of something. And then once you are uh, satisfied with that, then you would confirm back with the supplier that they could produce uh, a larger amount. So first step is getting the uh, samples in your hands. And then later on, you can order a larger quantity. And then if it takes or requires a container, a 20 foot or 40 foot container, then you would need a freight forwarder. And you can either look that up on your side to find a freight forwarder or the supplier sometimes has some contacts that he can suggest uh, to you. Okay, so you make a test order, you will work with a freight forwarder to get your goods exported, pay all the duty, and then when the goods will be coming and arriving in US, you have all the declaration to be done, right? So for each HS part of a product, you will have the import duties that will be uh, required, and then you have to pay the tax rates to the custom departments each time you go to import. Can you share a bit some of the tax uh, rates that are currently in US when you import from Vietnam versus China? Yeah, so you mentioned HS code. So every product has a, a classification that you have to assign it, whether it be plastics, telephones, clothing, or anything like that. So the United States has a large book of HTS classifications 
and you have to classify that. Uh, you yourself d don't have to do that, but generally speaking, the your customs broker or your freight forwarding team or something, somebody on that side would help you classify the product. And then depending on the product and the relationship between the United States and Vietnam or whatever free trade agreement you have with your country to Vietnam or to China, that will dictate the duty or the tariff that you would pay on um, certain products. So they're generally low, maybe, you know, one, two, three percent, six percent of duty, but it really varies on the product and the way the product is classified. And so that should have some kind of impact. For example, if you get a container of $20,000 worth of furniture, there might be a four percent or three percent tariff or duty that you must pay on top of that if you're importing to the United States or your home country. Okay, so this 3 to 4% are if you are importing from Vietnam, but now if you import products from China, what are roughly the rates that you can expect? So China, generally speaking, might be a little bit higher because of the uh, Trump trade war that was instigated in 2018. So across the board, there could be 15 or 20% increase in duty, and that could affect toys, uh, electronics, clothing, or even furniture, or so it really depends on certain products. Okay, so definitely now we understand how and why many companies are actually looking for alternative sources. Uh, they used to manufacture a lot in China, but they will go more to other markets such as uh, India, uh, it can be Indonesia, it can also be Vietnam for specific product categories. And then in the end, they will have a lower tariff when they will be importing goods in the U.S. You touch an important point, Vin, it's about a licensed broker that will be working on your behalf in the U.S. to help you do all the paperwork and all the compliance for your company. Can you share a bit more about how do they work and how you can oppose such professional? If you're starting off small or if you're an established importer, if you regularly import products from Vietnam, China, or abroad to the United States or to your home country, then it helps to work with a customs broker and they can be easily found. You can find a listing of a customs brokerage near your city. Uh, they generally operate out of ports. So I live in Florida, so maybe Miami or Tampa or even on the West Coast in California, you can find uh, customs brokers or generally speaking in any large city. So they can help you do the paperwork and import products on your behalf. So there would be the IOR or the importer of record. So they would take care of the duties. They would pay that to the government and then later bill you and they would help clear products into customs into the United States. So that's their role. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a customs broker. It just makes doing business easier. If you're just maybe starting and you want to import and try your first container or or less than a container, then you really don't need one. Maybe you can work with your logistics provider, your freight forwarder. They might have someone internally to help clear those goods for you. Okay, great, Vin. So good insights about uh, how you can leverage your business by having a grounded agent licensed broker that will be working on your behalf to help you streamline your import products to the U.S. Now, what are basically some of the risks that businesses can encounter and how they can efficiently source, manage risks, do quality control, as well as ensure supplier reliability while sourcing overseas and distributing to the U.S. market? Yeah, that role usually comes in the form of a sourcing agent or quality control on the other side. So if it's in Vietnam or China, they're usually based there. So partnering with that type of enterprise is very, very important, as you mentioned, because you have to have the quality control checks, you have to have the sourcing, you have to have the logistics. So someone you trust over in country is, plays a big role. And that's generally, you can find that uh, through search, uh, through Google, or through recommendation. But yeah, that plays a very, very important role. Thank you, Vin. Now, as a conclusion, what about some probably interesting stories, uh, testimonials that you have in your network, either colleagues or friends from the Dynamic Circle group who are importing products in the U.S. from either China or Vietnam? Yeah, so I think mostly the successes have come from China in the past. Vietnam is still new and not so many people are 
uh, maybe individuals anyways, or small businesses have the contacts to import from Vietnam. The only ones I know of around me now are maybe importers of pottery, uh, of home and garden products in Florida. Uh, they source from Vietnam. Uh, otherwise, uh, my individuals or some business people, um, they did very well from sourcing from China and then selling on Amazon. And so they, they did that uh, pretty well. And then other people I've heard of maybe have bought clothing or textiles in Vietnam. So that's the other successes that I've heard are, are dealt around me. Okay. Thanks a lot, Lynn, for your insight today uh, and tips how to effectively import products to the US, I will leave below in the description uh, more information about your website and your YouTube channel so people can reach you out more effectively and engage with you for further discussions. All right. Thanks, Guillaume. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Been down and I'm going to get it right. Get on sight like...